Hey guys, this is Neil, your Pinoy Plantito, and today we're going to talk about the basics of gardening. When I was a new gardener, I decided to search all those search engines to find what are the basic things that I need to know before starting a garden. And I was shocked to be bombarded by a lot of information, a lot of tips and gardening hacks all about that are not just not basic and intended for seasoned gardeners, but very specific rather than general. Things like you should get some grow lights, you should have this kind of pots, you should have a particular soil mix and all those things. I wouldn't say these things are not are not, not helpful to me, but I would say that those are not the type of advices and tips that I wanted to hear at that point in my gardening journey. But today we'll be talking about we're getting into the basics of gardening. So if you're a new gardener or even if you're a seasoned gardener, it is important to take note of these things. All right, so let's get into it. Tip number one, knowing your plan. This is an all-encompassing advice, guys, that knowing your plant is like the number one commandment in gardening. So what are the things that you need to learn about your plants? First, know your plant's origins. Where did your plant come from? Is it naturally occurring in jungles or in desert, in temperate countries or in tropical zones? You know, by just knowing the origin of your plant is a big deal already. You, because you can already tell what are some of the requirements of your plants in order to thrive and grow. For example, if you learn that your plant comes from a jungle living under the canopies of the forest on the forest floor then you can safely conclude that this plant probably hates direct sunlight needs a lot of watering moist soil and high humidity and if your plant comes from a desert probably steer clear from overwatering it because you might kill it so I cannot stress anymore the importance of knowing your plant because if you know about your plant, you will know about its requirements for growth, sunlight, humidity, watering. You will know about its natural enemies. You will know about it, the pests. You will know about its strengths, weaknesses, and temperament. And you will know how to propagate it. So just by knowing your plant, you are gearing yourself for a great success in gardening. So before you insert that plant cutting you're holding right now to that path that you prepared earlier why don't you take a moment to sit down research and study about your plan oh by the way that is not how you plan an allocation that's why you should study your plan uh-huh number two tip is knowing your environment it's another oh encompassing tip guys it's like number one and number two are the Ten Commandments of Plant Gardening rolled into two, just like the Ten Commandments, guys. Love God, love your neighbor. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> know your plant and know your environment. Knowing your environment is, this includes knowing the availability of sunlight, water, humidity, what are the types of soil, what are the available uh, resources, what pests and enemies are, of plants are present? And what are the, the enemies of this pest that you can utilize for a biological warfare? Hmm? Things like that. <laughs> it is very important to know the environment or the natural conditions around you for two reasons. First, you will know the type of plants that are most likely to thrive in your area. And number two, if you opt to grow, those plants that are not naturally occurring in your place, you can make some adjustment in these environmental conditions to suit the needs of those particular group of plants. Now, the difference between tip number one and number two is that while you cannot change the nature of your plants, you can make them acclimatize or make adjustment a little bit to the environment, but not to totally change the nature of your plants but your environment you can do something about it you can adjust your environment and do a little tweaking so that it will 
be suitable for your plants. And this leads us to our tip number three, creating microclimate. Creating microclimates is basically an application of tip number one, knowing your plant, and tip number two, knowing your environment. If we put them together and apply them, then we can create a microclimate that will be suitable for the needs of a particular group of plants that you have in your backyard or in your indoor spaces. So first, what is a microclimate? So a microclimate is defined, guys, as the environmental or atmospheric condition of a small particular area, especially if it differs to the general climate surrounding the area. So in essence, when you induce or try to create a climatic condition that is absent or very slim in a particular area, you're creating a microclimate. Actually, guys, a lot of us are creating microclimates without us knowing it. For, for example, when you plant a tree in order to reduce the harsh effect of the sun to the leaves of the plants in your backyard, or when you utilize a grow light in order to have more light in dim spaces inside your homes, or, and for me, even when you water your plants with a spray hose. It's like uh, creating a, an environmental condition that, that is absent, in a way creating an artificial rain. So that's creating a microclimate. So under this topic guys, we'll be discussing the importance of creating microclimates. What are its benefits? Number two, what are some of the climatic factors, environmental conditions that we need to take care of? And number three, what are some ways to alter these climatic conditions in order to come up with a suitable condition that is ideal for our backyard and our plants. And lastly, I will show you some of the changes that I created here in my backyard that is equivalent to creating a microclimate. So let's talk about the importance of creating microclimates and why we should do this in our gardens or in our spaces. Well, because creating microclimates will guarantee your success in your gardening. Why? Because you will be providing the best possible weather condition in your garden for your plants. So when I was new into gardening, guys, I actually didn't do a lot of research about the plants that I wanted to plant in my garden. All I know is that I have a plan. I wanted a tropical garden and I will be planting, of course, tropical plants in my garden. And the good thing is that I live in the Philippines where we're in the tropical zone. So tropical plants are naturally occurring and growing here in this place. What I am aware of, though, is the natural environment, which is tip number two in how to create a microclimate. I didn't study about these things in you because my background is actually, uh, my pre-law degree is, uh, is environmental science. And one of our major subjects in environmental science is environmental planning. So I have uh, an idea about, about uh, the importance of environment and and creating microclimates in in gardening so uh, even though I didn't study specifically about each type of plant that I will be planting in my tropical garden but I have prepared the environmental condition to be suitable for those plants in general so I would say that even though I I did not apply tip number one <laughs> really when I was a new gardener. There's still a, a lot of success in gardening because of just following tip number two and tip number three. Mm -hmm. So number one importance of creating microclimates is you're gearing yourself to be successful in gardening by providing the appropriate and perfect condition for your plants and number two importance of creating a microclimate guys is you make it easy for you as I mentioned earlier a lot of us are creating microclimates without us knowing it 
For example, a friend of mine uses this technique when she feels like a particular plant needs more humidity. She will use a platter, put some pebbles on it and water it so that when the plant is heated, then the pebbles will gradually release the water through the process of evaporation, therefore increasing the water of vapor in the air. And that's how you increase humidity for a particular plant. But imagine this, that only involves a single plant. How about if we do that thing on a grander scale or a bigger scale so that what will be affected and benefited is not just a single plant, but your entire backyard, or maybe it will even extend to your indoors. For example, what I did here in my backyard is to cover the ground with crushed rocks. And these crushed rocks are like the pebbles. And when I feel like there is a need for more humidity in the backyard, I will just sprinkle it with water so that later when the sun hits the ground, the rocks will release gradually water through the process of evaporation and increase the humidity, not just in my backyard, but also indoors, right? So next let's talk about the climatic factors. What are the important environmental conditions that we should be aware of? There are actually a lot of environmental factors guys, but we will be just dealing with the three most important things, sunlight, water, and humidity. And uh, all the soil is something that we can alter, but this is not a climatic condition. And uh, this is, uh, I think is appropriate for another more in-depth um, discussion about it. All right, so let's just talk about the first three things, sunlight, water and humidity so sunlight i cannot stress anymore the importance of lighting in your garden of course plants needs to photosynthesize so sunlight is crucial for the growth of any plants some of the examples of creating a microclimate is for example planting trees when there's too much sunlight so you can reduce the intense effect of sunlight to the leaves of some plants. Covering your garden with a net is to reduce the harsh effect of sun is also one of the easiest and, um, and cheapest things you can do in order to control the sunlight. How about if your place is very shady and doesn't admit a lot of light? Well, you need to, um, for example, remove some trees uh, create more ventilation for the light to come in and these are some of the things you can do to increase lighting in a particular place all right number two is next is watering out of all the three climatic factors that we will be discussing at this point guys probably the easiest to control is watering because you know sunlight is harder to to get and harder to redirect and you know harder to cover um, if you're receiving too much of it you will be needing like to build structure or plant more cover but watering is something that is easily within your hands to control you can just use a spray hose when the water is scarce and you can just water your plants when they need it um, the only thing that we need to be um, concern is how often so you need to know how often this plant requires watering and some plants also are very um, sensitive when it comes to some particular minerals of the water like uh, some colotheas hate the chlorine that is found in the, the tap water that we have in our faucets so this is something that you should really consider all right and lastly humidity so out of the three climatic factors that we are discussing right now humidity is probably something that is harder to observe why because yeah you don't see it water you see it sunlight you see it humidity is something that is invisible to the naked eye and uh, probably the most 
common mistake of, of all the gardeners is judging that heat and humidity are equal to each other which is not because um, it doesn't mean that a place is hot it is humid okay so you cannot equate it because humidity is actually the amount of water vapor in the air so it doesn't mean that it's hot it is humid for example I have a friend and her place is kind of hot because there's a, a galvanized roofing and um, it's covered by walls so uh, although there are plants like outside uh, her backyard and when you get inside you feel it's hot uh, and she thought it was humid but actually it's not because a lot of the plants that are thriving in my backyard when was transferred to her garden there they died so um, and then we um, we realized that her place is not actually humid but just dry so it's really different and also dump is also different from humid so when we say humid you feel the heat because that's the evaporation of water going up but it's that 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 it's not dry so um, that's I think is one of the most important factors um, you should never really equate hot with humidity so some of the things that you can do to increase humidity in your space is by putting a lot of plants okay so that's number one putting planting trees it has a very big impact to your backyard and also um, you know like uh, making a uh, vine fans and uh, and also a good way to increase humidity in your backyard is by putting a lot of gravel and crushed rock what I did is that I uh, I used a lot of crushed rock in my in my patio in 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 this um, deck area the backyard is almost entirely covered with crushed rocks then I I can say that I can increase the humidity of my backyard to uh, a lot more and this will extend to the entire backyard and even inside my house so I can say that generally my backyard has a high humidity aside from I have a thousand plants in my backyard and I have a lot of trees I have a wall fence so the humidity really in this backyard is very very high this area gives us a very interesting feature it may be likened to a natural greenhouse and provides a very good example of microclimate environment one and a half years ago I called this area the hell spot because no plant survived here for more than three days without getting completely burned because it is hit by direct scorching sun. When this Galatea lutea was planted here and has grown, its huge leaves provide a canopy protecting the sensitive plants placed underneath it while providing bright and direct light essential for its growth. During the rainy season, the leaves act as umbrella preventing excessive watering and redirecting the rain to its trunk eventually leading to its roots when it is humid the water from the ground evaporates the plant prevent the water vapor from escaping by trapping them under its huge thick leaves the water vapor then is converted to dew droplets which will eventually fall, returning to the ground. And that's about it for me guys today. Hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something and put that learning into application so that you will be more ready to take up more challenges as a gardener. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe to this channel. And do please check out all our other videos here as well in Pinoy Plantito. Happy gardening to everyone. Bye.